So five shares coming off their best week in nearly two and a half years. The stock surging as the newly signed debt ceiling deal included a restart to student loan payments. Our Bob Pisani live at the Piper Sandler Global Exchange Conference for an exclusive interview right now with SoFi CEO Anthony Noto. Bob, take it away. All right. Hi, Scott. Good to see you. Uh, Anthony, thanks very much for joining me. I just want to follow up on what Scott said uh, right there. Congress has ended the student loan uh, pause. Uh, students are going to have to start repaying their loans. What does this mean for you? Well, um, first of all, it was really important that we gave people the relief over the last three years not to have to pay their federal student loans so they could deal with COVID and the pandemic, but that's been over for about a year. So we really thank the represent, representatives in, in Washington for making that bipartisan decision. I think now what it means is consumers that have federal student loans should look to refinance. We can really help them out. If they have interest rates that are in the high sixes, high seven percents, we can save them money. If they have a, 10, uh, a term of 10 years, we can help them lower that payment. So as an example, if someone has $70,000 of student loans, which is our typical student loan refinancing, um, and they have a 10-year term at a 6% rate, their monthly payment's going to be about $775. Now, they haven't been paying that $775 for the last three years, so it's going to be an incremental burden for them likely in this environment. If they want to extend that to 20 years, they could lower that payment at 6% to $500 a month. Now, 20 years will cause them to pay a lot more than 10 years, but they can still pay at the same rate that they want and have that flexibility. Yeah. So people can save by refinancing at a lower rate. If they have high rates, they could save uh, on a monthly basis to look for a chance to refinance at lower rates by spreading out over the term. And we think people will do both. We're already seeing people do the second of extending the term. You, you were founded years ago to, found, to provide more affordable options for student loan payments, essentially. But you've expanded now. You're in personal loans, student loans, home loans. What is the state of the consumer right now? You have a, a, a view into... A, a lot of loan business. Uh, are, tell us what the consumer is doing right now. Sure. For the viewers that don't know, we're in the loans that you mentioned. Plus, we do uh, checking and savings account. Uh, we are a bank. We also have a brokerage account. We have insurance and we have credit card. Um, and in the most recent quarter, ended in March, we grew about 43 percent year over year. So there's a lot of demand in revenue. There's a lot of demand for our products, and we're continuing to see really strong deposit growth. We're continuing to see members pay their loans on time. And we're continuing to see them spend at a high rate. So you're not seeing an increase in loan losses, for, for example. We are still below the rates that we saw in 2019. There is a move towards normalization, but they're, they're still below the levels that were back in 2019. And I'd say our consumer, important for the viewer to understand, is more of a high-end high -end consumer, $100,000 of household income or more, and FICO scores of above 680. But so far, stable activity across paying loans, deposits and spending. You mentioned that you could save money to help people refinance their loans out there, particularly students' loans. Uh, the rate, the curve seems to imply that rates might be coming down. What, what does that mean? What, what happens when rates go down? How is that going to help you and how is that going to help consumers? Yeah, for consumers that are looking to buy homes, as rates come down, they'll be able to do that at more affordable prices. For consumers that have homes and need to refinance their mortgage, they'll be able to refinance at lower rates. And then those that have student loans, they can refinance with SoFi as many times as they want um, without penalty and without cost. There's no frictional cost, no closing costs. So they could refinance now and spread the payment out over a longer time period to lower the monthly payment. But they also could then refinance when rates go lower, as they're anticipated to do as we go into 2024 and 2025. The other thing that's important to know is as rates go lower, there will be less to make in checking and savings accounts, but we'll likely be able to continue to provide a really attractive rate for them. My colleague Scott Wapner has a question. Scotty. Anthony, it's so good to have you on Closing Bell. Uh, welcome back. You know, we're, I just had a conversation about sort of where we are with all of this AI mania and the hype around it and the hope that has sent a lot of these stocks higher. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to send you back to your younger days, to 1999. You're the internet analyst at Goldman Sachs, and you had a front row seat to how all of that led up in some respects and then how it dramatically ended. So do you view anything from this period right now with similarity to, to back then? I, I'd love it through the prism of, of your eyes. Yeah, there's definitely a lot of hype around AI. Um, there are companies that are changing their names to AI and companies changing uh, their URL addresses or finding some way to put it in the description of their, their company. And, um, consumers need to watch out for that. They need to protect themselves. The question they should ask a CEO or a management team that's prognos prognosticating about AI is, how much revenue do you think you'll generate incrementally from AI? What's the specific amount of cost that you're going to generate from AI? And really get to tangible results that will impact the performance of that company. 
I think from a consumer perspective, they're going to benefit a tremendous amount. The question remains, will that translate into better revenue or better profits for a company? For SoFi, we use it in our chat um, bot, which allows us to use natural language AI to better answer consumers' questions, which does result in faster resolution times, lower contacts per uh, customer, and also um, the ability to be able to provide more comprehensive answers across other areas of, of the company.